Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's our Savage, and today I'm going to show you guys how to utilize the hybrid playstyle without using macros. If you find this video helpful and want more content like this, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for me. But without further ado, let's get into the video. If you're not familiar with the hybriding strategy, essentially you're using two different combat styles so that there are no points in a longer boss fight where you're waiting on any sort of ability or special attack cooldown. Now this sounds nice and all, but it can be difficult to get into this method of combat without taking advantage of macros that would do all the proper inputs for you with one press of a button. Currently this topic lies in a weird gray area because in the rules of RuneScape it prohibits the use of macros as well as botting, however RuneScape mods have spoken about the topic on streams in the past and claim that they were not actively banning players for using macros at the time even though they were technically never allowed. I don't know about you guys, but I would rather not take that risk with my account by implementing any sort of macro into my playstyle. We really don't know what's going to happen in the future, and one day they might actually start enforcing this rule. Anyways, I wanted to get that brief summary out of the way since macros have become a lot more normalized over the years, but it's important to be reminded about the current state of the situation and not trying to push the boundaries too far so that you lose everything you've worked towards. Alright, before I get into showing you guys my hybriding technique at my favorite boss being Zamorak, I should probably show you guys how to set things up because I know how overwhelming it could be. Since I've been there myself, I've watched many top tier PVMers and have slowly been able to, you know, kind of adapt their methods of doing things as well as my own personal preferences into it to come up with the perfect setup that has worked for me. And a few kind of disclaimers are that I do have best in slot, but you do not need best in slot. Also, I am using magic and melee, but you can also go with something like magic and range. You know, you can do a different hybriding setup and whatnot, but hopefully everything I can show you today will help you out in your hybriding journey. Now, how about we head over to these settings to configure everything properly and I'll make sure to point out everything I'm doing and make it nice and slow so you guys can follow along. So I just hit escape on my keyboard and we are using the settings button right there. We are now on the game play tab right here, the first one, and then we are on combat and action bar and we are on the first option that is combat mode. So you guys can see right now I am using full manual but I actually started hybriding using revolution where the game would use my basics for me and I would take control of my thresholds and ultimates. And I thought this was a great way to get introduced to the strategy because I could focus more on making sure my switches were right and then I could focus on improving my damage later down the road. So I would suggest trying that out even if you are you know so used to full manual at the moment a good idea just so you don't have so many new things thrown at you at the same time and yeah that's pretty much it for that tab now we're going to go down to the action bar thing right here and you can see there aren't too many important things i need to show you at the top that's more of a preference things and other i mean great settings that you should adjust for your own combat sake but down here we're going to look at the display additional bars and if you don't have these already this is where you do it. These are extremely helpful. I have all four of them out because there are a lot of abilities and switches that you could utilize to really maximize your performance. So yeah, that's what I got there. And you can also name them, which I absolutely love to stay organized. So you got those all there, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, we actually have some more of these coming out with Necromancy, which is exciting. And uh, we'll definitely have to get those set up. Uh, but next here we have the action bar binding and under this section we have two really important settings that we're going to want to make sure you have a check in this box right here so first it says switch action bar presets when loading bank presets so this is really nice so whenever i take out my hybriding preset it's going to make sure my bars are all accurate to start off and then next down here the second one says action bar binding when changing weapons, any specified action bars will switch to action bar presets of your choice. So I'll get into how that actually, you know, plays a role in this whole technique very shortly. Here we're getting into one of the key components that really makes this technique work. And we're looking at the action bar binding setups. Since I'm starting with magic, 
I am gonna have to scroll down here and find my setup that is correlated to magic. And it so happens to be that the setup five and six is it for me, but you can obviously set yours up, you know, totally differently, it doesn't matter the order necessarily. And yeah, so here on the fifth setup, we can see I have the magic two hand. It's gonna be switching my main action bar and then it's correlated to uh, the naming convention that I did for the magic two hand. So that's how I know it's set up perfectly, I'm nice and organized in that department. And yeah, basically what this is saying is, for example, if I take out my melee weapon, it's switching my main action bar, you know, differently. And now when I put on my magic two hand weapon, it should be switching my main action bar to the fifth one as I set it up. So there we go. That is absolutely perfect. And I can also right click this and double check my naming convention. The fifth one is indeed the magic two hand yeah that's looking good we're gonna go back over to settings we're under gameplay combat and action bar and action bar binding we're going to scroll down once again and yeah so setup number six is for the dual wield so that is the exact same thing it's just you know set up for my dual wield and then also melee as well has its own thing but we're not getting towards the seven setup quite yet that's a little different you can see my normal setups go from you know one and two are the melee one three and four are the range one five and six are the magic one but once we get to seven and beyond things get a little different now if you guys notice here we're going to be focusing on setup seven eight and nine and what you can tell that is different from these is that the action bar that's going to be switched is actually my fourth action bar so what's happening here is that when I am switching, let's say with my melee two hand, I'll show you for example, I'm gonna switch that and my main action bar switched, which was absolutely perfect. And my fourth action bar is down here. And what is happening is that I have this extra action bar set up with all of my melee switches. So since I don't have too much inventory space, I don't have my legs with me. But you can see that everything did change so now my ezk is down here and then i also got some changes to my abilities so what i like to do is have my stuns lined up for each style on the same keybinds and this is what allows me to do that so if you guys didn't know your keybinds are correlated to your action bar but not actually the abilities if that makes sense so what i mean by that is that when i switch to my fsoi here It'll switch my main action bar, obviously back to number five, but it'll switch this fourth action bar to the 12th one. And since the keybinds are correlated to the action bar, I now have the same keybinds for more stun abilities with a different style. So if you're staying consistent like that, I think it makes it much easier to keep track of what you're doing. So you're not using certain keybinds for stuns with one combat style and then using totally separate keybinds for your other combat style when you need to actually stun something. And if you haven't already noticed, I've been using this strategy as well in some ways with my main action bar. And I guess a perfect example is Sunshine. And when I switch to melee, that same keybind is for Berserk. So that is definitely something you should try to work out do a lot of planning with your keybinds to try to make everything line up in a way that it really makes sense for you so what we've covered is that when i'm doing my weapon switches my main action bar is changing properly and that fourth action bar on the bottom as well is changing properly so that my stuns are perfectly set up as well as the other switches but the issue is that we don't have any room on these other action bars for my armor switch so what we're going to do for this strategy is head back over to settings. We're going to go over to the controls tab here. And now we're going to want to scroll all the way down to just about the bottom. We're going to find some of these main action bar presets. And you're going to want to look through some of your action bars here and see what is available. So maybe something you don't already have a you know name attached to. That's something you're not using yet. So take that one, for example, and then you're gonna to wanna to set on a keybind for that. So after you do that, I'm gonna back out here and I'm gonna press that keybind. So you'll see my main action bar is going to switch without me changing my weapon. And that is exactly what we want. You can, you know, obviously right click here and switch, but it is gonna be way more efficient to be doing your full switches 
with that right there instead of having to click and switch it. So after I did that, you can now see here are where my armor switches are. And the reason why I'm taking advantage of my main action bar is that I think for most people, your most easily accessible keybinds are probably on that main action bar where you know you're usually going with your ultimates, your thresholds, and your basics quite a lot. Especially if you're using manual, you're probably really familiar with your main action bar keybinds. So that's exactly what I did. So you'll see here, I would just do, you know, clicking my armor switches so it's visually easier to see. And I'm gonna walk you through what's happening here. So when I put on my melee armor, nothing is gonna happen. You can see on the right, my equipment tab, and we got the full vestments on. Now we got the EOF on. And I put this last piece here specifically, which is my EZK, and that is the melee two-hand weapon of my choice. But you'll notice what will happen here is going to be pretty awesome. So I'm going to click this and look at what happens to the main action bar as well as that fourth action bar down by the bottom that I was showing to you earlier. I'm going to click it right now, and there we go. My main action bar goes directly to the one I want for my melee two-hand and check out the action bar for going down to the one I want with my melee stuns. And it is absolutely beautiful that it gets set up that way. And now if we want to revert, I press that keybind. I wanted to switch my main action bar manually. And now if I want to go back to my magic, I have a really good technique with my finger placement for doing this, but you know, I'm obviously just showing you guys clicking it. And yeah, there we go. That is now my magic and everything's perfectly set up. And I'm obviously doing the prayer switches as well. That should have covered everything. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys and you're able to follow along. But if you do have any questions whatsoever, please let me know in the comment section below and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Now I'm at Zamorak ready to show you guys what this setup is capable of. But first I do want to point out a couple more things in my setup that are going to be important. We got the uh, glove slot here where I'm using the death touch bracelet instead of cinder banes since the Zamorak is not poisonable. But besides these two best in slot options, you should go with anything you got in your bank that's giving those bonuses in the two styles that you're using because you just want to have less switches when it comes to hybriding. And you can also see here, I'm just rocking blast diffusion boots and I have a switch to my vestment boots. but. You do see people often use the Silverhawk boots when, you know, inventory space is limited. That is another option for you guys as well while learning if you want less, you know, switches. So definitely try that out. Also for my ring slot, I'm rocking the Reaver's ring since accuracy is not an issue with my setup and that will work absolutely phenomenal. And when it comes to the cape slot here, I do have the hybrid Zuck cape where you will have to do normal mode and basically complete that without dying but also do the challenges properly without brute forcing your way through and just surviving even though a minion will stay alive and then after you do that you will unlock hard mode where then you'll have to you know go through that once again without dying and do the challenges properly and then you'll be able to combine the three capes into this one that you're seeing right here and it is very much worth it, you know, saving even more inventory space, even more inputs to make the switch while you are transitioning styles. One last thing before we start is your aura, and I will usually go with the Majra aura for that 5% damage boost in any style you're using, which is quite nice. But I also absolutely love the Supreme Invigorate Aura, which also will help you in any style. And what this one does is save you 10% adrenaline when using ultimate abilities. And it is extremely convenient to use along with the Conservation of Energy Relic, which I got. And what you'll have to do here is unlock it with loyalty points. It also has some tiers below it that you'll have to get. But you know, it is definitely worth it. I use it all the time. But yeah, let's uh, start up this 100% enrage attempt right here. And I want to show you guys the first two pads that I'll be doing, which will be two and then one. Show you what it looks like and, you know, how hybrid looks here. And then I'll get back to you guys at phase seven to show you what the kill time will actually look like. Once again, I will be starting off things with magic and I'll try to go a little bit slower to break things down. But I will have to speed up just a little bit on a few different things. But... I do like to sunshine there and use divert to get more adren, then I smoke cloud, nami, and then staff spec as well. Switch to exsanguinate 
and then I'm pretty much ready to jump on the pad now. This is kind of just, you know, normal. Haven't done anything too crazy quite yet. But yeah, we're just gonna, you know, try to skip the mechanic. Kind of taking it chill. And this is just how the first, you know, pad goes on. And what I'll do here is try to deplete, you know, most of the gray. Because when I get back, I'll be doing my melee switch. And you can't really hit the boss while you're on the pad with melee. So... I wanted to get that down all the way, and now I'll be taking out the witch, also with magic, because if we're going to be using melee, we want to make sure the cooldowns are not all caught up, so I'm just going to finish this off here, and now I'm going to go up back over to Zamorak, and here is where I'm going to make my melee switch happen, so how about I also put on Magma Tempest while we wait here, I'm going to use my keybind to switch my main action bar, switch to my melee prayer, and then I will slowly make my switch with my other gear, which finally making the switch to my melee weapon. And I'll make sure I have 100% Adren here where I will Zerk and Divert once again. And what I can also do is do a barge, go back on the pad, make a charge up. Now we release the barge. We can do a Chaos Roar. I think it actually goes away though if you Chaos Roar and then the pad charges. So that is one key thing to note. But look at that, we just absolutely nuked the gray bar. And something though with melee, it's like not as important, I'd say, to get rid of the gray bar completely. Because what you'll see here is I'll go back to magic. That was actually a pretty clean switch there. And I also always double check my buff bar to make sure the prayer is swapped. And I also always want to be on Insight Fear, of course. But the thing with magic here is that I need to, you know, get my Insight Fear stacks. I also need to Tsunami, build the rotation. So. During that part, I can deplete the gray bar, but you know, when it comes to melee, that's when I want to have the bar already depleted. And what I do here, now on the next pads, is go with the metamorphosis approach, because we get more out of it than a sunshine, and if we're going with speed, this is going to be the way to go. I should have also switched to Insanguinate. Just about to start phase seven here, and you can see that I'm actually switching my action bar and then making the inputs to switch my gear right as we enter phase seven. That's a little trick right there. Then I'm also using Ice Barrage on the demon so it doesn't come at me, praying magic for these two hits, throwing down my sunshine, using smoke cloud, and also throwing a Vuln Bomb, heading over to the first rune and starting to build my rotation with Tsunami, switching to the Exsanguinate spell, using my staff spec, and then getting back in front of Zamorak to deal the damage with my Geekonk into an Omni, then putting on that Prey Melee pretty quick there, using Devotion, using the Vitality Pot for the Big Bomb, and finish things off with Tendrils for around a 4 minute and 30 second kill, which isn't too bad. Well, that's all I have for you guys in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you did enjoy. Best of luck with your hybriding journey. And don't get too discouraged at first because it gets easier and easier once you build that muscle memory with your keybinds. Anyways, I want to give a big thank you to my channel members. Your support is greatly appreciated. But other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure to turn on your notifications to never miss a new stream or video. Also hit that like and subscribe button for me and I'll see you in the next one.